Hey guys, it's Mountain Hunter. I promised you guys optics videos, so this is my first one. So here we go. So the reason I'm doing this series, um, I want to look for the ideal Eastern whitetail hunting optic. Kind of the criteria of what I'm going to be reviewing is I want to keep the budget under a thousand bucks. I think that's you know it's still on the high end, but I think it's it's doable for a lot of guys that are are serious about whitetail hunting. So under that, we're gonna to try to keep it under a thousand bucks. Um, the power range, I'm gonna to try to keep it. Want to focus on three by nine, two to ten, somewhere around in there. Uh, maybe even throw in some two to twelves or an occasional three to fifteen on the upper end. Um, the weight. I would like to keep the weight around 20 ounces or less. Um, we'll get into more on that here in a few minutes. Um, something that has a good field of view. And what do I mean by a good field of view? I try to look for a scope that has at least or really close to 35 feet at 100 yards. You start getting any lower than that, and you start really pinching yourself on your on your field of view. It's 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 really hard to see, find your game or target or whatever you're looking for. Um, and illuminated reticle or an illuminated dot, which is which is optional. We'll kind of go into the to the pros and, and cons of that. So my first review is obviously it's the Night Force SHV. 3 to 10 by 42. It's a MOAR reticle, non-illuminated. Item number, Charlie 563. So you know exactly the one I'm looking at. Um, I picked this up from Sport Optics for about 800 bucks, give or take. Um, so what do we got here? We got a 30 millimeter main tube. Um, 3 to 10 power magnification. You've got your fast focus eyepiece here in the back. You got your parallax that runs from 25 all the way out to infinity. It's really smooth. Doesn't make any noise. It's very nice. Um, so I took this, took this optic out and didn't actually get to shoot with it. And I'll tell you why. Uh, I got the gun set up, um, was getting ready to bore sight, and started to make my elevation adjustments to move the reticle down, and come to find out the elevation turret is completely frozen. So, yeah. Didn't get to do any shooting with it, so uh, what I tried to do to salvage, you know, some of the, some of the review is take it up in the woods um, early in the morning, late in the afternoon, and see what the reticle look like um, in the vegetation. Because it's not, as you can see, it's non-illuminated. It kind of shows it on the on the uh, box that it, it, it is illuminated, but it's it's really not. Um, so I took it up. I took it up at at dusk and later on in the afternoon at dawn. Um, when really the, the majority of the games is going to be active. And uh, I tried to want, I wanted to see if I could see the reticle, uh, you know, and reduce visibility. Um, looking at darker targets, at, at logs in the woods. Uh, and and distance-wise, we're talking, I looked anywhere from about 10 feet out to about 350 yards, which is, which is kind of pushing it for, for the kind of optic we're talking about here. Um, it, it did really well. Uh, I did have some issues when I tried to focus in on, let's say for specifics, a, um, a dark tree, a down log in, in kind of the shadows covered by, uh, tree cover. So that was, I could still pick it up. I could still see it, but I, I had to, you know, I had to squint a little bit and it, it was, it was a little bit harder. Um, <clears throat> any kind of daylight, it was, it was fine. Um, the glass is very high quality. 
what you'd expect from Night Force. Edge to edge clarity is really good. Um, field of view is really good. I think it's like 34.8, so it's it's right there at that 35 you know feet threshold. Um, picking up things at 10 feet, it, it wouldn't you know really close. It it wouldn't a big deal. I had I had plenty of field of view. If you've got a, a white tail or a hog or you know a black bear or something like that, um, it, it it I had no problems picking it up. Um, this weight on this scope, we're a tad over 20 ounces. I want to say it's like 20 and a half or 20.3 or or something like that. So for a 30 millimeter optic, it's it's um, the the weight's pretty good. It's got a it's got a real good balance to it. Um, I mounted it up on my 30 odd six and, uh, it, it balanced, it balanced perfectly. Um, it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't have the illuminated dot. It doesn't have L, the illuminated MOAR reticle like the NXS line do, it does. Um, but is it really necessary? Is it really necessary that you have that illumination? And that's kind of what I was trying to figure out by, by doing the review. Um, obviously, I didn't get to do tracking test or anything like that because I didn't get to, to shoot any rounds through it. But uh, just an just an overview of the optic as far as the field of view, the clarity of the glass, um, the power ring adjustment. It rotates really smooth. A lot of a lot of scopes you'll get them and. And when you first put them on, they're really tough. They're really tough to make those adjustments. Uh, this this wasn't the case uh, for the SHV, other than the completely frozen elevation knob, which I'm sure not force will will take care of that. Not a big deal. Um, so I'm not really too concerned about that. Um, yeah, the length on this scope, I want to say this guy is around 11.8. So it's a nice short scope compact gives you plenty of power you're a three to ten um the reticle i really really like this reticle um on here it's it's kind of deceiving it's almost a german number four ish type reticle but you can see your what's different on the box as opposed to really looking at the reticle these subtensions for your vertical in your horizontal come out a lot farther than what they look on the box. So it's, it's, it's kind of deceiving. And they're, they're very, very fine, so it's a very nice aiming point. And what it does is when you, when you pull it up fast to actually acquire a target as a running deer or a hog or a bear that you have to pull up and, and take a quick shot at, it, it kind of automatically centers your eye on, on that reticle. Um, so I, I really, I really, enjoy, I really like that uh, compared to traditionally most of us hunt with a, a duplex reticle. Um, so, and you also you've got it's kind of hard to see it here; it probably won't focus. But you've got thirty minutes of elevation on your vertical, and you have twenty minutes of windage um, on your horizontal, which is more, way more than enough than what we're talking about right here. Um, I don't really want a scope that I have to dial with. I'm not going to review any optics that has um, custom turret capability. It's not really what we're not really what we're focusing on for this for these reviews and for what this optic is for. Um, the majority of the calibers that this whole series is going to relate to is more standard calibers. And what do I mean when I say standard? Um, 270, 30 out 6, 308, and now we kind of have to put 6.5 Creed more in there because it's it's so popular. But cartridges that are running typically 2,700 to 2,900 feet a second. Um, that's kind of what we're talking about. We're not talking about magnum calibers. Um, we're not talking about um, turning turrets or custom dial turrets 
we're shooting long range. That's that's not really what we're we're going to get into. Uh, this is mostly for eastern whitetail hunting. That's that's the focus of what I want to look at. And whitetail, you can put black bear in there. You can put hogs, um, anything like that. Something that's that's simple that doesn't have a lot of. It's it's kind of intuitive to use, and that's that's what I found out of the scope. Um, the things that I don't like about it. These scope caps are hot garbage, man. I don't like these scope caps at all. And I, I know it's a small thing. But um, they're great for transport. For transport and a scope. Uh, to and from the range. To and from the woods. If you're on an ATV, you obviously, you know, you're going through the woods. You don't want to get dust on your, on your glass, on your exterior surfaces. Anything to obscure your sight picture. Uh, so for that, I, I think they're okay. But as far as leaving them on your rifle while you're hunting, yeah, I definitely wouldn't do that. And here's the reason why you, you pull these open and you can see they just kind of flop right back in front of your line of sight, your field of view. And the same with the ones up here on the jet. You flip them open and they're just, they're just kind of floppy. They don't have any spring to them you can't lock them down they're just yeah basic rubber now they're they're nice they're they're high quality they're they're a thick rubber um but yeah the only thing i see these things good for is transport and storage of your rifle in a safe in a case you know whatever that may be for you so uh yeah do i think the the shv3 10 by 42 is is an excellent Eastern whitetail hunting optic? Absolutely. I think it's, um, for the price point of what you get, it's it's the lower end of what Night Force does, but even a lower end Night Force is, is um, probably exceeds some of the other optics that I've used from other manufacturers. They're, they're very high end. So don't, don't think that if it, you know, doesn't have a price tag of an NXS or an an ATAC R or you know something something along those lines that you're getting reduced quality because that's that's definitely not the case here. Uh, I can I can tell you that. The um I have an NXF and I will tell you the glass quality putting these out at daylight and dark um side by side there is not a thousand dollar difference. Not even probably not half of that um which is about the price difference between this and my nxs two and a half to ten by 42. um the resolution at farther distance is is noticeably better on the nxs than on the shv um but i'm talking at distance i'm talking three four five hundred you know you're starting to get out of the realm of of kind of what we're talking about so and it's 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 definitely the difference between the two is definitely uh, not worth a thousand dollars. The NXS is is built to a more stringent military specification. Um, it's got very very precise elevation and windage turrets. Um, the glass is a, a little bit better uh, as far as like I said the the resolution, the edge to edge clarity. But you would be hard pressed to. If you just threw it up in the woods and you're shooting 100, 200, even 300 yards uh, to you know to see the difference of that. In the NXS, you get um, you get an illuminated reticle, red or green. Um, um, this you also get um, your whole eyepiece turns when you move the magnification um, instead of where you just have a ring here that moves your magnification. Um, you grab the entire eyepiece on the NXS and you rotate, um, you rotate your power either up or down. Um, and if you have scope caps on it, that's a pain in the ass because your scope caps are always going to be, if you rotate that power, they're always going to be in the way. They're always going to be in, um, once you move it from, you know, whatever power from two and a half to five or six or seven or whatever power you're you're cranking to, um, they're going to get in the way and you're going to, have to readjust them. 
so it's kind of a it's kind of a pain in the ass um, on the on the NXS. I, I I really rather prefer for what we're doing. Um, you know, if I was shooting PRS or something like that, then yeah, um, a uh, a cattail or a, or whatever they call them for um, moving your power a lot faster. But for for what we're talking about, this is this is completely completely adequate, more more than enough. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any questions, comments about the SHV three to ten by forty two um, product number Charlie five six three. Um, quarter MOA turns, MOA, MOA or reticle, non-illuminated version. Um, leave the comments, ask questions. Uh, I've got another scope review coming up on the new Sig Whiskey 5, 3 to 15 by 52. So you guys are going to want to check that out. Um, Mountain Hunter out.